5.2 or 5.3 rational functions, graphing them. And today we're going to use the handout that I've referred to in the description of the video that's on my PBWiki site that you can download and keep for yourself and follow along with if you have time in a printer. Or maybe just open the page and follow that along as well. So in this case we're talking about rational functions where the degree in the numerator, that's my f at x, is equal to the degree in the denominator. So that means I would have something like x squared blah 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 over x squared blah 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 or just x over x or x cubed over x cubed, whatever. In this case there's only one horizontal asymptote, y equals b, in which this b value is the ratio of the dominant terms. Okay, so I want to explain that a little more carefully for you because your textbook doesn't talk about this at all. So let's talk about horizontal asymptotes just for a second here. The question is, what happens as x approaches infinity? So if I have a function like this, 2x minus 4 over x minus 4. I'm going to switch over to a pencil because that's not working so well. And I said, what's the horizontal asymptote for this rational function? So what I want you to tell me is what happens as x gets really, really, really big? So you could start plugging in a bunch of numbers and see what it approaches, but that's a lot of work. So just as you can take a ratio like 4 over 6 and make that equal to 2 over 3 by dividing by 2, I can take this function here and divide every term by, what I'm going to divide it by is the variable with the largest degree. In this case, it's just an x. So this will become 2x over x minus 4 over x divided by x over x minus 4 over x. And if you simplify that, you would just have 2 minus 4 over x over 1 minus 4 over x. So now it's very easy to see what is going to happen as x gets really, really big, right? Because as x gets really big, and what we say in math, we would write as x approaches infinity. So as x gets really, really big, minus 4 over x is going to approach 0, right? Because if I divide 4 by a million, you'd have a lot of decimals before you'd get to your 4. So it's getting really, really small. And what you're going to be left with is this, 2 over 1. So that means this approach is 0, and you're left with 2 over 1, which is, of course, 2. And that, as we break the pencil, is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. So you don't really need to know this, like how we're getting it. All you need to remember here is that, unless of course you're asked to explain it, and, and that might be something they ask you in, in the calculus course. But right now, you just look to see, do these have the same degree? Yes, they do. Then this is one, and the horizontal asymptote is two over one or two. Okay, so let's go back to the handout. And we have, there are two vertical asymptotes, odd and even. We've discussed that in the last um, part one of rational functions. So remember that odd goes in opposite directions, like on this graph, and even goes in the same direction as this one is going in this example. Now, this is something that people sometimes get confused about. The graph can cross the horizontal asymptote for small or finite values of x. In other words, the horizontal asymptote is what happens as x approaches infinity. It doesn't talk about what happens as x approaches uh, for x values within a small area. Now, it depends on what finite means, right? A finite value. So in this case here, you can see we're going to graph this equation here. 2x minus 4 over x minus 4, which I began with. The horizontal asymptote is 2 over 1. You make your dotted line. This should say y equals 2 is your horizontal asymptote. You look to the numerator for the x-intercept. The x-intercept would be 2. These are in 2s, by the way. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
and the vertical asymptote is at x equals 4, so 2, 4. It's not drawn on here, but you get the idea. And then you do the same thing as we did in the previous examples. Um, it's an odd asymptote, opposite directions. So here's another example here where you can be crossing the x-axis. Or crossing, sorry, not the x-axis, but the horizontal axis here. So we look at the terms. Now you have to be careful because you need to be able to expand this to see that this is x squared in the numerator. If you expanded this, it's obviously um, been factored. So x squared over x squared. This is a 6. This is a 1. That means the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 6 here. Um, the x-intercepts are 1 and 3. Easy to plug those in. And if you check a value on this side, you'll see it's positive. So it's going up on this side. That means it has to be going up on this side. But you still have to cross this x-axis to comply with the roots that you found here. So I put in 1 and 3. I find out it goes through here. It's got to go back through here. And then it will approach y equals 6. Okay, so let's do some examples. Um, they're all laid out for you in the handout. I'm going to do them on another sheet of paper. It says graph using the method of single, double, and triple roots, method of even and odd vertical asymptotes, the direction towards the horizontal asymptote, and you can cross the horizontal asymptote. So let's take a look at the first one here. We have y equals 2x minus 6 over x minus 1. So the first thing you're looking for here is what is the horizontal asymptote. And you can see that the ratio of the dominant terms here, so this is degree of 1, degree of 1, so it's 2 over 1, and my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 2. So I'm going to sketch that on here. Make a nice little dotted line, and don't forget to label your asymptotes y equals 2. The vertical asymptote here, so I'm going to write them out, horizontal asymptote, y is equal to 2, vertical asymptote, x is equal to 1, and I'm going to write after it that it is an odd asymptote. So x equals 1, I make my other dotted line right here, and I check to see are there any x-intercepts. X-intercept says what makes the numerator 0. 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. 2x equals 6. x equals 3. This is my x-intercept. The x-intercept is 3. 1, 2, 3. I put my dot here. Okay, so now I have boundaries that I, I'm not going to be crossing. We have... Um, an odd asymptote here. We're going to go up and down on either side. So I'm in here, which means um, it can't be coming down this way if I have to approach this horizontal asymptote as I approach infinity, because I'm not coming back up through it. So that implies to me that I'm, I'm not going to cross this asymptote. I'm going to be coming up from here, and I'm going to approach this asymptote. So this is going down. Now you could check some values if you want to, um, even if you plugged in, say, 2 here, we would have 4 minus 6, that's negative, and um, 2 minus 1 is positive, so that means I'm negative here. Okay, so it's gone down on this side, it's going to go up on this side, it might be nice if you could tell me where the y-intercept is, y-intercept, set x to 0, and I have negative 6 divided by negative 1 is positive 6. It's odd, so this one's going up on this side, and this is going to come down on this side and approach the um, horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Okay, let's do letter B here. y equals x plus 3 over x, so the x-intercept is negative 3. Again, that's what makes the numerator 0. Um, I have a horizontal asymptote it's the leading terms here, so that's 1 over 1. So y equals 1. And the vertical asymptote is what makes the denominator 0, and that's 
x equal 0. I shouldn't put equal sign there. Okay, so I have everything I need to draw on here. I have horizontal asymptote at 1. So I'm just going to make a dotted line here. y equals 1. I have another vertical asymptote here at x equals 0. I have an x-intercept at 1, 2, 3. That's minus 3. And um, the y-intercept, well, we don't have a y-intercept because we have an asymptote there. Okay, so I want to know I'm here. This function has to approach this asymptote. So it has to be going this way. And this one is going down on this side. Now again, this vertical asymptote is an odd one because it has a degree of 1. So that means it's going up on this side and it's going to approach y equals 1 as x approaches infinity. Okay, moving on. Let's make sure I don't do what I did the last time and make things disappear on you. Okay, so again this time, notice, remember you have to be kind of reminding yourself as you do these that these have the same degree. So the horizontal asymptote is the coefficients here. So it's 1 over 1, so y equals 1. The vertical asymptote is x equals 0. And this time it has a degree of 2, so that means that it's even, an even asymptote. So same direction. What are the x-intercepts? So I'm going to say x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. x squared equals 1 x is equal to plus or minus. Don't forget when you square root, it could be plus or minus 1. So I'm going to put my dots here. I have a y-intercept at, sorry, not a y-intercept, but a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and now I have to sketch my graph. So it's even. So let's pick a value that is, hmm, let's go inside these values. So sometimes the teacher might ask you is what side does your graph approach? Does it approach from above or from below? So as you're approaching the horizontal app, is it coming this way or is it coming from here? Now this function could come up like this and come down, we don't know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some values to see where I'm going to be. So let's say this is one, let's take two. When I'm at two, I have three over four. That's three quarters. Um, if I went to, because I'm only subtracting one, this is going to get closer to the value of one as I go this way, right? So let, let's say I put in a hundred, or maybe make it a little easier. Let's put in 10. So we have 99 over 100. So it's getting closer and closer to this asymptote here. And if I put in a value here, let's say a half, so I would have a quarter minus one, that's negative three quarters, divided by an eighth, an eighth. So negative, negative three quarters divided by an eighth gives me minus six. So this is going down pretty quickly. Now this is an even asymptote because it's squared. So the same thing, we're going to have the same thing happening on the other side of the graph. Okay, and this one here, we have x minus 1 squared, x plus 1 squared, and x to the fourth power. Now remember, you have to say what happens if I expanded this. So I would have x to the fourth, right? I have x squared times an x squared. So I have x to the fourth over x to the fourth the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 1. The vertical asymptote, again, is x equals 0, and it's still even. It's the fourth degree, 4, so it's an even number. The x-intercepts, well, this one is going to be 1. This one's going to be minus 1. So 1 and minus 1, and I want you to write after that that those are double. They're double roots. Right, because it's to the power of 2. So this time I'm going to draw it in pencil. I don't know why I wasn't doing the pencil thing. So I'm going to plug in. Here's y equals 1. y equals 1. Vertical asymptote, x equals 0. 
usually my students, I would tell them to write these. The asymptotes are better seen if they're colored, but basically I like all my math done in pencil because, well, people make mistakes, even me. Okay, so now I need to know, um, where does this graph go? If this is a double root here, and I was coming up this way, I could only touch it and then I would have to go back down because it's a double root. So that means that the double root must be going this way and off. And the same thing on this side must be coming down like this and that way. So that means that I think there's going to be a place where this is going to cross this horizontal asymptote because it's even. That means it has to be going up like this because the endpoints have to be the same. It doesn't go back over this. Remember, these are double roots. And there's my graph. Now, your teacher could ask you to find the coordinates of where this is equal to 1. Because if I set this equal to 1, I should be able to solve for these points where it crosses, or the x value where it's going to cross that asymptote. But I'm not going to do that for you. No, I'm not. Okay, we've got four more graphs to go, so let's get going here. The first one, x minus 1 squared, x plus 1 squared over x cubed. So again, if you want to stop right now and try the rest of these on your own and then come back and check them, that might also be a good idea. So you can see that this is going to be an x squared times an x, that's x cubed over x cubed, and I get y equals 1 for my horizontal asymptote, and I'm going to sketch that one in right here. In the denominator, again, we have x equals 0, so it's y equals 1. And the x-intercepts, what makes this bracket here 0? 1. And it's double, right? It's a double root. x-intercept 1, double root. Remember, that touches and turns around. And the other one is minus 1, and it's a single root. Okay, so there's all my little dots that I need to put on here. And I need to know what happens as x approaches infinity. Okay, so where is my graph going to go? This is a double root. So it's either, if I came up this way and made a double root, there's no way I'm ever going to get to this asymptote, right? you see that? If I come up here like this, oops, i got to turn around. I can't approach this, but I know that it approaches this as we approach infinity. So this has to be going down like this, and then back up like this. So this is an ex another example of crossing the horizontal asymptote for finite values. Remember, the horizontal asymptote is asking, what happens as x approaches infinity? So way out there. Okay, now we know this is an odd asymptote, so that means that if this is going up on this side, it must be going down. And if it's going down, this is going to come through here. Now the big question, the big question for this one is, am I going to cross this and approach, or am I going to come under it and approach zero? Sorry, one. Okay, so what you would do what I would do is I would get out my calculator and I'd say, okay, let's take a look at this equation. If I went really far negative, let's plug in 100. So that should be far. If I get a number for y, a value for y that's greater than 1, that means somewhere along here I crossed the, y, um, the horizontal asymptote. So let's put in 100. So we have 99 squared times... 101, so that gives me my numerator, divided by um, 100 to the power of 3. And I get 0.989901. So that should show you that we are under 1. Except, did I put in... Did I put in a negative? I didn't put in a negative. Let's try the negative number. It's not going to affect the squared one. So, um, oh, let's try it again. Negative 99 minus 1 is negative 100 squared. Of course, that's going to be positive. 
times, now I have negative 100 plus 1 is negative 99. And I'm going to divide it by, I'm going to put it in brackets, negative 100 to the power of 3. And that gives me 0.99. So I'm underneath. It's not going to cross. It's going to go like that. So you should should check those values to make sure that you're in the right position and you don't cross the asymptote there as well. Okay, this one here, x squared minus 1, x squared minus 4. Um, you're going to need to do a little bit of factoring, right? So this is x plus 1 times x minus 1. I'm just going to put an equal sign here, though. That's really not a good thing to do in mathematics. One equation of... of one equal sign a line. Okay, so I factored it, which is giving me um, the zeros, the x-intercepts of 1 and minus 1, and they're single roots. x-intercept plus and minus 1, both single. My horizontal asymptote, so I have x squared over x squared, that's 1 over 1, which is 1, and my vertical asymptotes are going to be negative 2 and positive 2. So x equals plus or minus 2 and they're odd asymptotes. Right? They have a degree of 1. Don't look at this thing. Once you factored it, that tells you what the degree is. Okay, so horizontal asymptote, very quickly sketch in here, y equals 1. Um, we have 2. So I'm going to put a vertical asymptote here x equals 2, and another vertical asymptote here, x equals minus 2. Okay, so now what are we going to do with that? We cross here and here. We're bounded by this. As x approaches infinity, we have to come out here. Okay, so we don't have any other x-intercepts. So if I went to this outside quadrant over here, or out here, on this side, if I put in, um, let's say, minus 3. Negative 3, that's 9 minus 1 is 8, that's positive, and 9 minus 4 is 5, that's positive, so I'm up in this quadrant. And because as x approaches infinity, this ha has to approach 1, that means this is going to go like that. Now, on the other side, we have a similar situation. We're plugging in the same number and squaring it. So if I put in minus 3 or plus 3 and square it, I'm still going to get the same answer. So that means that this part of the graph must be the same as that one. Okay, so my vertical asymptotes are both odd. So if that's going up. This has to be going down on this side and same with this one. And I have to cross here and I have to come back through here and down. So you could check what happens when x is 0. So that would get you on the, uh, y, the y-intercept. If x is 0, I get 1 quarter. So this little point here would be 0, 1 over 4. OK, a little bit trickier. And finally, we have two more little graphs here to do. First one, x squared minus 4. Again, we have to do some factoring. So I have x plus 2, x minus 2. Don't forget, this is a difference of squares. If it was plus, it would be a totally different equation. And I have x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay, it's kind of similar to the one above, except I have 2 in the top and 1 in the bottom, right? Okay, so let's plug this in the horizontal asymptote or asymptote, as my students like to say, y equals 1. The vertical asymptotes are plus and minus 1. Sketch those in quickly. x equals 1, x equals minus 1. These are both odd asymptotes. That's very helpful for you. And the x-intercepts are at plus 2 and minus 2. So I have one here and one here. Now again, we have to look at what happens in all of the sections of the graph, right? I need to know 
I'm in here. This is going to approach infinity this way, and it's going to come down here. This one is bound again by this asymptote and this one. You can never, never cross a vertical asymptote. Okay, that's that doesn't ever happen. Ever, 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 ever. Okay, so just the horizontal one could be crossed. In this case, no. When x equals zero, what do I get? Zero, zero, minus four, minus one, I get plus four. So at plus four here, that's my y-intercept. This is an odd asymptote, so it must be going up on this side and up on this side. Don't forget to fill in all sections here. Don't forget the graph has all these different values that you have to check. And finally, the very last one here we're going to do, 3x times x minus 4. Okay, so 3x times x is 3x squared. Over an x squared, the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 3. The vertical asymptote is x equals negative 1, and it's even. The x-intercepts are, in the numerator, what makes this 0? So I have 4 and 0. So 0 four and they're both single roots. So I'm going to put a dot on four, I'm going to put one on zero, and I'm going to draw in my vertical asymptote, which is just negative one. Don't say plus or minus, I know it's tempting, but no, no. It's just what makes that negative one, and that would be an even asymptote. So I'm looking for the same direction. Um, on both sides of the graph, right? Oh, got to plug in the one, two, three. So I didn't put in my horizontal asymptote. So y equals three. If y was equal to, um, this is minus one, let's go to minus two. I would have a negative times a negative is a positive over a positive is positive. So I know I have to be up here. Um, it's because I'm bound by this asymptote, it's going to go up this way and approach this way. So I've got that figured out. Now on this side, this is an even asymptote. So that means I have to be crossing this horizontal asymptote so that my direction is going to be the same. Remember, if it's even, it has to be going the same direction. This is a single root, so I have to pass through this. And then somehow I got to come back and pass through this and then go off to meet it, the horizontal asymptote way out here somewhere. Okay, so if you want, you could do some, some checks on other values. Let's say we took, um, let's try, so this is 4, so let's look at what happens when x is 2. So f at 2 would give me what? 6 times minus 2 over 9. So that's minus 12 over 9, which is divided by 3, minus 4 thirds. So here I'm at, I'm only at minus 4 thirds. So it's really doesn't come down this far at all. It's pretty flat. That's probably more accurate. Don't do that on your paper. Erase it. Okay, so that's part two. Um, the next lesson will be on oblique asymptotes, and I'll cover that one as soon as I can. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Less than more than half the people who watch my videos aren't subscribers. I would really appreciate it if you would. Bye-bye.